In this video, we will be creating forms for a database. Forms allow us to create a front end to the database that simplifies and hides the inner workings of the database, such as the many primary and foreign keys that will be meaningless and confusing to most of our database users. I am looking at the database tools relationships view of my database, and I have four tables. I have a cast table that has foreign keys to the movie and actors tables. This cast table acts as an association table, establishing the many-to-many -many relationship between movies and actors. I will be creating my forms by clicking on the Create ribbon, selecting the More Forms drop-down, and selecting Form Wizard. I will select the Director table, adding the Director last name and first name. After clicking on Next, I want to keep the columnar form layout selected and again click on Next. I have the opportunity to select a style for my form and will click on Next. At this point, I can change the title for my form. I am leaving the title as it is and I will click on Finish. So this has created a form for the directors that are in my database. I can click on the next record and move through my database. I can click on the last record and jump to the last director or I can click on the first record button. If I want to add a new director, I can click on the new blank record button and enter some information. Now we will be creating a form that will be a bit more complicated. Again, I am opening the Create ribbon, selecting More Forms, Form Wizard. I will be selecting the Movie Table, and from the Movie Table, the title, the rating, the year, and the director ID for the Movie Table. I will then select the cast table and the actor ID. Now, you might be asking yourself, why not just select the actor last name and first name instead of selecting actor ID from the cast table? So I'm going to show you what will happen if we actually did that. Notice that it is not easy to select an actor that already exists in the database. So using foreign keys, we can easily create combo boxes that will allow us to begin typing in the name of the actor and immediately having it bring up the appropriate record. After clicking on Next, I will elect to view my data by movie, so it will show the movie information, and it will then show the cast records underneath. I will continue to use a form with a subform, and then click on Next. I want to see this in tabular arrangement, so I will select Tabular, and then I will click on Next. I will continue using the Access 2003 style. For the subform name, I want to know what form is using my subform, so I will be putting in the word movie in front of the cast subform name, and then I will click on Finish. You will notice at this point that it shows my movie titles, the MPAA rating, the form has the director ID, but we don't see the director name. It also has the actor IDs that appeared in the movie, but it doesn't have the actor names. If my underlying table had used lookup fields, I may see the director and actor names. Since I do not have lookup fields on the underlying tables, I will now need to alter the combo boxes so that meaningful data appears in the combo boxes. So I will now alter my form entering design view. At this point, I can begin editing my form. I will select the director ID combo box and right clicking on this combo box, I will open the properties pane and choose the data that is displayed in this field selecting the Data tab and clicking on Row Source. I will click on the Ellipsis button for the Row Source and create a query that will populate that field. I want to query the Director table. I will use my Director ID to populate the query and also pull down the Director last name. I will then make this field a little wider. I will type in the AND sign, then type a single quote, comma, and then another single quote. A single quote is just an apostrophe. So I have created a string of text that contains a comma and a space, and this will be appended on the end of the director's last name. I will then hit space and add another and sign, and type the field name for the director first name. I will run my query to see how it looks. I see all the different directors with the last name followed by the first name. My query looks good. Notice that I have this word right here, expr1, expression1, when I looked at my query results. This is the field name that was returned for this field that I have created, so I returned to Design View and changed the expr field name to the word Director. I will now close out of this query. It asks me, 
Do you want to save the changes made to the SQL statement and update this property? I will click on Yes. And I can now see inside this box the SQL statement for the query that I just created. I will return to the Format tab and make sure that I am pulling back two columns. I am pulling back the ID field from the Director table, and I am pulling back the Director name and the Director first name that are appended to each other. So that is correct. While I am displaying the information I want in the dropdown, I want to make sure I am hiding that first column which is my key. I do not need to see my key, and I do not need to show my key on the form. So what I will put in is a zero and then double quotes. This means that the first column will be zero inches. I will then add a semicolon to indicate that other columns are following, and I do not care what length the second column is. I will now look at my form in form view. When I look at my form, I see the director ID. If I want to, I can click and I can select another director. Notice that the word director appears right here. This is where we replaced EXPR1 with the word director. As I move through the different records in my database, you will see that it shows each director for each movie. I can replace any of these directors if I want to. I will now return to Design View, and this time I will select the Actor ID combo box and perform the exact same operation. Since we have already performed this procedure once, for the sake of time, we will move through it quickly. We use the Row Source field in the Data tab to build our query that populates the combo box with data. We bring back two fields from our query, with the first field being the primary key to match the data on our form, and the second field containing last name, comma, first name. We look at the Format tab and make sure that we have a column count of two and that we're hiding the field that contains the primary key. Returning to Form view, I can see the actors that are in these movies. I see a problem with my data. James Phelps is the actor that played Ron Weasley in the Harry Potter movies, but he should not be appearing in this movie. So I will need to add a delete button that will delete that record out of the cast table so I do not have to manually find and delete the correct record from the cast table which associated this actor with this movie. I will enter design view for my form. I will click on the subform. I need to move my mouse over the corner of the subform and wait for the cursor to change into a double headed arrow. This indicates that I am resizing the subform, so I can then resize the form, making room for my delete button. Now that I have resized the subform, I need to resize the canvas that appears within the subform. I will wait until my cursor changes into a vertical bar with arrows on each side, and then click and drag, extending the canvas. I now have room to add my delete button. I will go to the Form Design Tools Design ribbon, click on the button icon, and then click in my subform, adding a button. I will select a Record Operations button that will delete my record. I will click on Next. At this point, I can choose what kind of icon I would like, or I can choose to have text. I want the little trash can icon. I click on Next. I can give my button a name, but I'm not going to worry about that unless I plan on using my button in a macro, so I will click on Finish. So I have created a little trash can icon. I want to resize my icon and then I will drag the bottom edge of my canvas and make my form a little tighter right here and then take a look at it in form view. So notice that I have a little delete button here next to each of my actors. If I click on this delete button, what it is actually deleting is not the actor record from the actor table, but it is actually deleting the cast record from the cast table. So I will delete this record and click on yes. Notice that I will not be able to undo this delete operation. Even though it looks like a recycle bin icon, that is a misnomer because I am actually deleting the record permanently from my database. So now that the record is deleted, if I look at the Harry Potter movie, I can see that James Phelps still appears in my Harry Potter movies. So I have not deleted him from the database, I have only deleted the cast record that had associated him with the wrong movie. I can delete that record with a lot less work than what it would have taken otherwise. So as you can see, creating a form greatly simplifies maintaining and accessing data in your database. I want to briefly mention one other thing. When we are in Design View and we click on our subform and we go to the Data tab and Properties, we can see these properties, Source Object, Link Master Fields, Link Child Fields. These three properties actually control how the subform and the form filter the records that appear within the subform. So if you decide to build forms with subforms without using the form wizard, knowing how to use these properties may become very important.